need to take to your system so you got out? Over a thousand. It's over a thousand here today. So it's absolutely phenomenal. This is the biggest of all the yeah. protests we've done here. We've had some big protests, but this just wipes the floor with them. anything so, like it so, to be so, honest so as an activist in this area and it just shows how absolutely sick and tired people are of being shafted by what this is a Labour Council we've got in here a long-standing Labour Council who are doing this to workers you know and these women because it is predominantly women are saying no we're not doing this we're not having this we don't want the pay cut we don't want the pay cut Every single demonstration we've had here, there's been hundreds and hundreds of people. Every rally we've had at the Miners Hall, hundreds and hundreds of people. It's fantastic. Yesterday there were over 80 picket lines across County Durham. It just shows the strength of feeling about what the council are doing to us. I've worked all my life and I've never been dismissed from a job in my life until now. And what they're doing to us is absolutely shocking. They're going to dismiss us and re-engage us on new contracts and I'm going to lose nearly £5,000, 23% of my salary. We've had letters of redundancy um, to say we are being made redundant by means of dismissal and re-engagement and that will come into place if you're a Unison member on December the 31st. But if you're a GMB member who some voted to accept the proposals, they won't be sacked, so to speak, until April. They've given us a new contract with new terms and conditions, which means working more hours, but it means less money, and I can't work any more hours, and I'm definitely not working for less money, so they've put me out of a job. For a lot of us, the option of, of going up to the 37 isn't feasible. We've taken on a contract that was, it suited our life, it suited our commitments outside school. We're happy to work at home, but for some of us, there are other reasons that we can't work for 37. Initially, we were offered one year's compensation, which is actually our wage for a further year. That's all it is. It's not compensation, it's having our year, wage for another year. So then when they went back to the negotiating table, they increased it to two years. But when we rejected the offer, they are now saying that if you're with Unison, we are getting the one-year offer. Anybody that is not in Unison will get the two-year. We paid a salary, which is divided by 12 months, so it's over the year. So we've We've always been for the holidays and we've always walked, worked a 32 and a half hour week, half eight till four. We are term time workers and we just get paid divided by 12, if you know what I mean. So now if they do that again, we, we're penalised twice. They're saying it's only about term time. Other councils already pay them term time, but they're on a much higher rate. Other county councils in the area are actually paid up to £4,000 a year more than we are. We've never been paid for overtime if you do residential, school trips, anything like that. The nature of a, a TA is to give. They always go beyond yeah. what, what they do. It's just, it's just the, the nature of a TA. So you do work at home, right? Some girls Definitely. can be working until 10 o'clock doing the planning and things like that. You go out, I go out on a weekend, I can be looking for places for children to visit, for ideas. You use your own money to buy resources for things that you're doing. You never put a bill in at school. So if you're making the Play-Doh or you're doing crafts, I mean, Fiona does a lot of crafts, yeah. she funds it all herself. I do learn outside the classroom, so I buy seeds and plants and things. And you don't, you don't mind because I've been doing this job for 28 years and I love it. I'm on just under 17,000 at the moment and if I work, if I work the extra hours, I will get 2,000 off that. If I don't work the extra hours, I'll get 4,000 off that. For me, that is my mortgage. My mortgage is in my name and that is my whole mortgage. I'll manage, but it's going to be really, really hard. I've got a son with special needs. What I try now is to make provision for him as he gets older. That's going to be a problem. It's life-changing pay cuts. Um, 
I, I won't be able to keep my home, I won't be able to pay my mortgage, I won't be able to finance my daughter through uni. Uh, and I've spent 26 years looking after children of the county and they say every child matters, apart from the children of teaching assistants because they're like the forgotten ones. I've got three children, I've got a husband in remission with cancer. Um, my home is up for sale now as we speak. Um, I can't keep the home. It's just so unfair. Mm. So unfair. I mean, how, how can you ask anybody to take a 23% pay cut in this day and age when we're low paid workers to start off with? I couldn't stay in the job. I love my job, that's why I've done it. That's why I've stayed here. This is like a second family to me. Mm. Um, it's kept me going as a person. Um, through my life, that's otherwise I wouldn't be here. I absolutely love my job. It's all I've ever wanted to do, but I can't. I can't do it. And to be honest, nobody would. Nobody would do what I have to do. It's kind of really stressful and hard work. You don't get a single second in the day to do anything other than work. And mm. nobody would do it for that amount. I don't do it for the money. It's never going to make me rich, but I just love it. They still think we're paint pot washers and things like that, but the amount of support we provide the children is unreal. Mm. Unreal. On every level as well, personal care, education, social, social. emotional, wel welfare, everything. Mm. We're not valued at all and they want to take more money off us. Typical week, I take children out every day for fine motor skills. I take a group out once a week for handwriting. Um, and when I say, say a group, there's at least 11 children. Um, on my own. You do intervention groups, you take classes, you cover for PPA. Um, you, you do emotional, welfare, everything, you know. I have been on residentials, I've been to France, I've been to outward bound places, on duty 24-7 for five days. Mm. And no extra money for that and we do it willingly. People think your job ends at four o'clock, it doesn't end at four o'clock. It goes well above and beyond four o'clock. Holidays, do work in holidays. A lot of people think we've got all them school holidays. You work in them holidays. You take your work home with you. I'm employed to do a one-to-one -one with a, a certain child and then I do um, maths, English, phonics. I, I teach whole groups of that. So we're actually teaching, we're not just supporting learning, but I'm employed as to support. So um, I kind of think what we've been taken advantage of, we're overused and underpaid for that overuse. In my role, I do a lot um, more safeguarding with children and monitoring um, send children, um, assessments, it's more specialist. I've trained 15 years, um, I've got experience working with children with autism, with Down syndrome, uh, I've got a degree in art and I do a lot of artwork with children. Someone else coming in isn't going to have all that training, so the children are going to miss out on so many things. 2012 they took money from us then as well, but not the teachers. Mm -hmm. They took our SEN allowance yeah. off us and not the teachers. And then again, they're hitting the TAs again and the teachers will say themselves, they can't run the classrooms without our help. I got up this morning and I have never felt so sick. I know, and I'm standing out, I'm standing outside my school that I've come here for 28 years every morning and I'm standing protesting. And it just, it's just not what you do. It's just not what you do. Lots of schools closed and the ones that weren't closed, we've all used that as an opportunity to speak to parents because our hands have been tied for so long. We're told that we can't say anything that will bring the council into disrepute, but then obviously they can say whatever they want about us. The council put an awful lot of pressure on heads to stay open where they possibly could. I think that backfired on them a bit. A lot of parents were unhappy with the disruption of a school being partially open, having to turn up and pick up their children at lunchtime. Um, also, in school, we've heard of children being uh, sat down watching DVDs for the day. They certainly haven't had the quality of education that they would normally get. This is totally a grassroots-led campaign and that's been our absolute strength. It started with a Facebook page, bringing everybody together for support and to make sure that information was consistent and then it's just gone on from there. So we've got our Facebook page but we've also got a network of school contacts we've set up 
200 schools out of the 270 in County Durham we have a contact in that we spread information with and that's what all this is about it's giving people the power and the strength to know that if you stand together you can fight this. There was a girl called Helen Pace who started it off first she did a Facebook page and then more TAs got with her. We've got a fabulous group of girls that have started off the County Durham Teaching Assistance Action Committee and they've had such passion that they've really managed to kind of band everybody together um, and we've commented it just within our own school how much closer we all are we are really unified and we're there to support each other now and it's something I've worked a little bit with the committee I've done a few things with being a, a designer and I think everyone's suddenly thinking I've got something I can give you and it's this collective and it's just it's not weakening it's gathering momentum, it's not getting any less. I think people really are empowered by it and it's just going to get stronger and stronger. From the beginning we pulled together mm. as a group of desperate people with nowhere to go and from that, mm. uh, yes there are uni union banners around, but from that and with the support we had from the Durham Miners Association and the Trades Council in the beginning, this is, this is the culmination of it and I would say that yes, regardless of what banners you can see, this is a grassroots campaign and any of the people around here will tell you where the heart of the campaign is. What we found like over recent years is that unions have become apathetic, you know, it's too comfortable a relationship with the employers and you know what's beautiful and amazing about grassroots activism is that it's people power that changes things, you know, and I think that other people around the country can learn a lot from what these women and, well, and men as well, because there are women and men here, what these men and women are achieving, you know, and they don't actually necessarily need the union to do that. Solidarity is the absolute main thing. Solidarity within our campaign, but also solidarity from the wider community and the country. That bringing of people together just gives you strength and power. Don't be a victim, don't sit, think you have to accept it. Stand up and fight for what you believe in. It's incredibly inspiring that really a drive from below by rank and file teaching assistants has got them to the point where they are taking very strongly supported strike action and staging a demonstration like we've just witnessed outside the county hall here in Durham. So I, I really thought it important that people from outside the area, from London in particular, come and, and show them that they have backing from within the union more generally in the wider labour and trade union movement, especially given the fact they're up against a labour-controlled council that is hiding behind arguments regarding equal pay legislation and actually attacking the very sort of workers who should be the beneficiaries of equal pay legislation. The TAs are very much a giving, are very much an organised people. Um, so they do us. So this is something that we can organise, that we will do, and we will roar today.
for me, this is like coming in a football match. I like away matches, and this is like being in a football match, but of, like of women. So we've <laughs> shown an example to our children. I don't care what they say; they shouldn't be on strike and this, that, and the other. We show what we want our children to have, and that's resilience. And it's resilience to stand up and fight for what you strongly believe in. Yes. child at our school and she's wrote this where I don't need it she's wrote this letter to Durham County Council I am writing to you to tell you what a disgraceful job you are doing about my magnificent teaching assistant pay if it wasn't for a TA's encouragement and belief in me I would never have started running at cross country I am proud to have represented my school in so many extracurricular activities that were only made possible with the teacher's assistance, help, determination and dedication. In my year, there was a child with special needs. Throughout his time at his primary school, he began to grow in confidence and friendships. Without the teaching assistants who helped him, he would not have been able to progress as well as he did. How can you pay four million to a cricket, cricket club? Yeah. If we did not have teaching assistants, then we would not even know how to play cricket. <laughs> it is never too late to say sorry and put, your right, put right your mistakes. Please, can you have the manners to reply as soon as possible? <laughs> Every single person here has been impacted by this. It's an emotional time, it's a difficult time, it's a hard time. When you're trying to run your life as normal, when there's people within your family with health issues, or you're trying to bring up children, or you're trying to keep your money, or you're trying to keep your house, they don't see that, they see you as a number in a school. Yeah. But by God, I wish they could stand in and see the numbers that are in front of you. Another thing coming. Already we are paying strike pay from day one. Already we've established the heart. <laughs> Initially, £150,000 into the hardship fund. That's the beginning. A national appeal to all of our branches, our whole union, to get behind you within Durham. And I've got no doubt whatsoever, and I'll say it very clearly from this platform, nobody will be forced back to work through hardship. We will protect you, we will be with you, and we will win. So this is one of my midnight rattlings on, right? We don't strike because we want to, we really have no choice. We strike because we deserve to be heard and we want to have a voice. We didn't take it lightly to stand outside and fight, we know it's our duty to stand for what is right. We fought this battle for so long now, our lives are just not our own. But with every passing week and month, our determination has grown. We can't sit, sit back and complain when our wages badly hit, when we haven't stood our ground, when we haven't done our bit. When you see us outside our skittle, we'll smile to hold off tears. When you see us on picket and protest lines, we'll smile to hide our fears. For the places we hold dearest and the children that we cherish, we'll be muddling on without us there, the ones that help them flourish. If life had the ability to stop, rewind and pause, we'd press play and we'd move forward and we'd stay fighting for our cause. Thank you. Yeah.